Hi, everybody. Brian Galicia. I'm part of the Microsoft and LinkedIn teams that where we can empower our customers to help turn the turn relationships into revenue. Uh, you may have seen in a video that we prepared last week, um, and thank you for those who viewed it, engaged it, and commented on it. Got a lot of good feedback, and so I figured I'd provide another video giving everyone insight as to when you can take LinkedIn and the best of all the network and the relationships that are on LinkedIn and then incorporate that into a productivity tool like Office 365, what can that look like on a desktop or even on a mobile device? So I'm gonna take a few minutes just to showcase what are the scenarios that we can empower users, not just sellers, but users who utilize uh, LinkedIn and have the opportunity to take advantage of that in context to information in Office 365, what type of outcomes and productivity could that uh, potentially drive? So first off, I wanted to share with you, this was a statistic that was shared with my peers from LinkedIn, but it's pretty amazing to see the growth worldwide and the number of registered members or uh, people on the LinkedIn platform, like many of you who are watching this probably, who have a LinkedIn profile, you are contributing to, again, the business professional network where all of us can drive, hopefully better uh, professional outcomes by sharing and engaging and building relationships di digitally. So it's great to see that we have so many members joining and con continuing to grow the base because as more members join, the more insight and the more relationships we can build uh, with each other over time. And this is going to become important because what if you could actually, no matter where you're at in the world and you're looking at the statistics specific to your country, imagine being able to harness the ability to see information within LinkedIn, people's profiles, but relationships, and put that in context to uh, an email as you that, that you receive potentially from a, a user or from someone that you may not know. So we think about Microsoft and LinkedIn. When LinkedIn was acquired by Microsoft a little over a year and a half ago, trying to make sure that, again, how do we empower employees to be more productive and successful, leveraging not only the power of one Microsoft and all the other solutions that Microsoft offers, but then taking the best of LinkedIn and incorporate that into the scenarios. And so not only do we view it as privacy and security, because we do want to make sure that we are constantly thinking about how do we maintain member privacy and have a member first mentality, but then expose the information when we can. And if someone opts into exposing it, being able to allow people to take advantage of that uh, enhanced teamwork and artificial intelligence that can be applied based upon what you're looking at in context to the record. So with that uh, initial summary, let's go ahead and look at what could this look like when we think about taking uh, the capabilities of Microsoft and LinkedIn and you put it together in a single solution. So what you see here is this is my outlook. Um, you can see the detail I'm going to use just for privacy reasons. And I, I got permission from my manager, uh, Christine, who allowed me to, to utilize her profile so we can show some uh, a real scenario. So let's just say, assume that I was going to send her an email or even better, she sent me an email and I can hover over her name and figure out, okay, how well do I know her? How do I know her at all? So assuming that I got this email and you can see here that when I just hover over her name, there's going to be a LinkedIn experience that now gets embedded in context to this record. Why is that valuable? Because it allows for productivity gains because I don't have to open up another web browser, log in, type her name in and find that information, I'm getting this information in context to what I'm doing, in this case, staying in Outlook. So if I click on the LinkedIn profile button, you're gonna see here that it's gonna match, attempt to do a nice matching exercise to who we believe this is. And I already did that. But if you have a common name or a person who sends you something has a common name, it would actually offer different choices to allow that person to make a decision on which is the person that it should be matched to as you look at this over and over and over again. So what you can see here is I get rich a, a rich set of information, not leveraging Sales Navigator or any insight yet, but it just gives me what Christine has published publicly that allows me to see in context to the experience to where I can see her LinkedIn profile, see where she went to school, and get the option to look at this in more details if I want to click on this and see her broader profile within LinkedIn. But let's just say, for example, I'm in uh, the web. So another great example is if I was in my Outlook experience on the web, I can get this exact same experience 
to up here if I'm not, let's say, at my desktop and have my machine out, I'm at a common machine, I log into the Outlook Web Access, and I can see the same information. But the one thing that is enhanced here that you may have noticed is that it actually is also pulling in Sales Navigator details into this experience. So eventually this will occur and be applied in desktop. But today, again, if I'm in Outlook Web, not only do I get the great benefits of seeing the LinkedIn experience from this, uh, uh, from the web, but I also can see Sales Navigator. If my company has invested in utilizing Sales Navigator, I also can see some rich information about a mutual connections, things that Sales Navigator knows, as well as being able to, as you can see here, follow Christine or follow the person in Sales Navigator so I can stay in, in contact and stay on top of what may be top of mind, job changes or things she posts online. I can see all that information it, it in richness to, again, the experience. So finally, what I'll do is let me uh, go ahead and share my screen on my phone so you can also see what this looks like from a mobile experience. So when I go open my mobile device and look at Outlook, you're going to notice we're exposing the exact same thing. So if I have Outlook Mobile on my Android device or my iOS device, I also see this rich information from the experience. Not only is it pulling in her contact details from what Outlook knows in Exchange, but you can see here, I can see her LinkedIn profile all in context to that experience when I'm uh, on the go and on mobile. The other thing that is really valuable as well is if I have invested in Sales Navigator, you can also, and a lot of people don't realize this is available, but if I have Sales Navigator and I have, let's say my uh, Microsoft Exchange calendar syncing to my phone, I also can pull in this rich information. So when I walk into a meeting, I actually can have a point of view to say for anyone who's invited to that meeting, how well do I know them? So with that being said, there's all these rich things that you can apply when you think about taking the best of LinkedIn and the best of, of Microsoft, in particular Office 365 and uh, productivity tools and merging them together. So I hope this was you find this uh, video valuable. Thanks for the engagement and looking forward to connecting with many of you and uh, having future presentations on, again, the value of where does LinkedIn add value to the overall Microsoft experience. As always, go Microsoft, go Dynamics, and uh, thanks and have a great day. Take care. Thank you for watching. If you found this informative, please like, share, and subscribe to Business Applications YouTube. There you will find more videos on customer success, Dynamics 365, the Power Platform, and Microsoft AI. To navigate there directly, visit aka.ms slash business applications YouTube.